What is going on, YouTube? How you guys doing today? I'd like to welcome you guys to Red's World. Give me just a second. All right, I had my monitor auto. I can't even talk. I had my audio monitoring on, so I heard myself. So it sound super confusing. Um, so what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the stream. Um, how you guys doing today? Um, today I'm going to be playing a game called 60 Parsecs. I did play the... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? The the game before the sequel, the original game, I guess. <laughs> um, sixty part or sixty seconds. Um, it's a text based adventure game. Um, basically, just you start off and you got to grab some supplies and stuff, and you only get like a minute to grab supplies, and then you got to see how long you can ration out and there's random stuff that happens random events uh people die you got to go out and do things now i have not played 60 parsecs so i don't know at all what happens i guess i don't i don't know like what i have to do to survive so i you know i may do terrible <laughs> but um there are some really unique things that happen within these games so it's pretty cool to see, um, you know, uh, like on 60 Seconds, we, uh, me and my girlfriend played it on the channel, and there was a cat that walked into our bunker. And when the cat walked in, we basically took care of it. One of the characters was allergic, had a horrible reaction. The cat ended up working for some crazy scientist. The scientist built a ship and, like, sent me to the moon. Like, that was one of the endings I got. But then... It shows the rocket, like, crashed at the end, like, the credits and stuff. Like, th there's so many possible outcomes, it's insane. So these games are pretty cool. Um, it's a lot of fun to just see where it'll go, what kind of crazy things can happen. Um, the worst thing is, is it's impossible to ration supplies at first. So... You know, basically, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to die probably pretty quickly the first time. But that's all uh, that's all I can do at first, uh, learn the game. And uh, hopefully we have a lot of fun playing it. But um, I'm going to give everyone a second to get in. I did post uh, the post on different sites and everything, Facebook, Twitter, blah, blah, blah. If you guys haven't followed my socials, um, definitely do that. So that way you guys can stay linked in. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe. Hit the post notification bell. It'll tell you when I'm going live, when I'm uploading videos, so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, um, I'm going to try to keep up with the chat. So if you guys have anything you want to say, anything you want to talk about, I don't care if it's about the game or something going on in your life definitely comment down below i'll try to read it and keep up with it um but yeah let's have some fun i guess i'll go ahead and switch over to the game here give me just a second um All right, there we go. Give me a second. Grab me a tissue. Apparently, we're going to have a little allergies this <laughs> this stream. But uh yeah, so um with this game um let me make sure everything is yep. Yeah, see it's a little off center there, so I'm glad I looked at that. Um Let's fit to screen. Now you guys can see it. All right, so 1080, bam, bam, all of that's good. Oh, uh, we'll go with imminent. Alert nuclear apocalypse imminent, executing order 1961. New protocol initiated, commence Astro Citizen emergency drill and brace for nuclear impact. All right, let's get into it. Also, if you guys want, you know, I'm all for being in an interactive stream. I don't know, so I can't really guide you guys on anything. But, uh, 
if you guys want to do like i'll let you guys pick and basically like you know pick the options like uh should we send this person out stuff like that we can do that too but you guys got to be active in chat for that to work if not i'm not even going to worry about it <laughs> um so let's see move all right grab some soup bam drop it in the shuttle all right Find some medical supplies. Yeah, this is... This is gonna be rough. Find the handbook. See, this is my learning opportunity. Usually, this right here would only be like 60 seconds and then I'd have to figure out who I want to bring, what I want to bring, so on and so forth. So right now, I'm just going to look around and basically see what all I can grab. I don't know what these are. They look like some sort of like fuel or something maybe. Alright, let's take the handbook to the shuttle. Find some crafting resource. Yep, see, that's what it's going to be. Okay, so crafting is completely new. Find a crewmate. Um, we'll bring DD. All right, bam! Alert. Uh, what? Incoming missile, high risk impact. Grab whatever, whoever, and head for the shuttle. All right, so now I have very few time, or not very few time, very little time. Uh, all right we're about halfway i don't know if we need water but if we do we are probably doomed because right off the bat i have little to no water uh i don't know what that even is we'll grab it i think three people is enough to survive Ah, come on. I'm grabbing a whole bunch of junk and I know... Uh, I don't really have time for anything else. Come on, we're in, we're in. Go! Woo! We got in, alright. Wow. The soup can be stored up to 737 years. <laughs> Jesus. Alright, so... Right off the bat, I didn't get any water. I don't know if we need water. We got a bunch of food, though, and that's good. Um, I think I gotta click over here. Greetings, Astro Computerized Assistant reporting for duty. You must be Emmett, right? I am pleased to announce that according to my data, you qualify to become the captain of this vessel. Welcome aboard the escape shuttle. Uh, welcome aboard the escape shuttle, Captain. On behalf of the Astro Citizen Program, please accept our apologies for the slight misfortune of being transported 60 parsecs away from Earth. Current goal, find a safe place to land and try to contact the outside world. Please turn on the main computer for further instructions. It is located in the center of the shuttle. Follow the regular rationing protocol and feed your uh, crew. The command is yours. Okay. Uh, the floor is yours, Captain. Uh, you should now give a speech that will guide this vessel and its crew through the stars. You've prepared it, of course. The crew is eyeing you anxiously. The time is to show your true color. The time to show your true colors is now. This is it. You can really show what a breed of captain you will be on this incredible journey. What kind of speech will you give? Uh, flexibility, intelligence, strength. Okay, so he's smart. Uh, probably smart. So let's do smart, I guess.
I don't think anyone needs. We got Baby Bronco, Dee Dee Dawkins, and Emmett Ellis. I don't. I guess I'm. Okay, okay. What is the rationing protocol? Because I know on the other game it told me not to feed them. I think it'll tell me if they're hungry, so we'll end the day. You knew exactly what to say. Your convincing speech was more than enough to prove uh, your worth as captain of at least a human crew, of the last human crew in the universe. That was quite a performance, Captain. Your crew started cheering even before you were finished with the speech. Long live the Captain, filled the cabin with three people. Um, if any sound could travel through the soundless void outside the hull of your ship, that would be it. One thing is for sure, you are ready for any challenge this galaxy throws at you. Inspired by your smart leadership style, I allowed myself to power up the enzyme generator in the back of the shuttle. It will produce some useful chemicals for you daily. DD reported being glad to have you as her captain. See, so I think with that, it'll tell me when they're hungry. Captain, it's important to keep yourself and your crewmate, crew well fed. One portion of delicious canned soup is enough to sustain a human for a few days. Whatever you took from the space station will uh, have <laughs> to last for a while. That's why it's important to keep a good inventory of your stock unless you want to eat your own crewmates. Haha, <laughs> that was a joke. Please appreciate it and laugh. <laughs> Look, we're bonding already. This is bonding. Who will perform the routine supply check? The only requirement is simple mathematics. I realize I might be asking a lot, but I have a good feeling about this crew, Captain. Okay. Uh, I... What am I... Who, oh, who will... Okay, okay. I guess I read it and just didn't process it. Okay, so I need routine supply check. Average smarts. He's dumb, but he's strong. I guess we're gonna do DD. Think you can handle that, DD? I don't want to feed him yet because it hasn't told me they're hungry, so we'll wait. Good news, Captain. The shuttle came pre stocked with emergency food. We're good on food. Um, the routine supply check is now complete. Well, well, look at that. The numbers add up more. So we got four more cans of soup on top of like my nine. Um, correction. The accurate tally is actually 13. <laughs> Additional foodstuffs were delivered to, uh, you know, it's funny that it says that after I just said, <laughs> that's funny. Um, additional foodstuffs were delivered to this shuttle instead of, uh, entertainment supplies. Lucky you. The food you collected is more than sufficient for now. Just don't eat it all at once. Since DD did such a good job, I think it's only fair to nominate her as your payload officer. In this role, DD will generate some minerals for you daily as long as she respects she was captain anyway. Okay. Can I... Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so this is where it tells me if they're hungry. Okay. So this is a little more advanced. Okay. Captain, the crafting module in the back of the cabin has been activated. It's pretty self-explanatory. The state-of-the-art machine lets you create and destroy in accordance with your principle of mass conservation. All you need is a little bit of min uh, min uh, min yeah, minerals, chemicals, or power. Use it to craft, recycle, and repair your supplies, as well as create items and upgrade. Yeah, what is that? Okay. Uh, turn items into resources, upgrade. What can we upgrade? Nothing. What can we craft? I don't think we need... I do like that, though, because there were a lot of times in the last game where it would, like... Excuse me. Um... There were a lot of times during the uh, 60 seconds where it'd be like, man, I, I can't grab everything, so by luck of the draw, I'm just going to have to be screwed in this situation. So, you know, now if I need a lighter, I can craft one. If I need to recycle, I can recycle. That's pretty awesome. I like that a lot. That's a really cool feature. All right, so I don't think I need to upgrade anything for now. So we'll go ahead and end the day. We made it. 
three days. We're on day four now. That's not bad. I haven't eaten anything. I told you to activate the crafting system and no, I didn't for forget about it. It's it's activated. Okay. Oh my gosh, you found the holographic chess set on board. You've never heard of a holographic chess? It's like regular chess, but with big round uh, with a big round board and your pieces are holographic monsters. Because it doesn't use physical pieces, I can totally play you. You'll have to input my moves, but just remember, I control the airflow to where you sleep at night. You'd better not cheat, is all I'm saying. Wanna play? Ah! Yeah, I, I mean, I guess. Why not? Pick something first. I mean, it's turned on, I, I believe, so... Wait, 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 wait. Let me check the food. Loyal, hunger, okay. So, with soup, it looks like everyone... Like, you get a full can, but on 60 seconds, it's like everyone could eat out of one can, and it would not even take the whole can. So, rationing soup is going to be a little different. I can't believe it. You defeated me in holographic chess. How? The computer always wins. I know you had help from the crew. I'm tempted to turn the ship into a pile of smoking space junk, but good game. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have won, Jesus. Um, aside from me having to the burning desire to kill you, uh, the mood around here feels lighter, doesn't it? Everyone's in high spirits. I guess brutally crushing the soul of your beloved ship's AI will do that. You traitors, you're getting quite hungry, Captain. DD is complaining about an empty stomach, baby recall. Report. Who's Baby? Is that his name? Baby reported being glad to have you as his captain. Baby is hungry. Okay, well, we'll... Hmm. Ration soup to... Oh, what is, what is this? Okay. Oh, no, Captain. One of the storage locker, lockers is jammed and cannot be opened. It gets worse. It's my favorite locker. We'll have to lose access to some of our supplies if we do nothing. Also, I will be sad. Uh, you need to act, Captain. Brains are brawn. Well, I mean, he's smart, so he's very wimpy. Alright, so since we got the brilliant guy, it's seeming like our best bet is going to be to constantly just go with brilliance, but... I could be wrong. Everyone gets a little soup. Friend zone. So everyone likes me. I think. Good job getting that locker open. It took a while to figure out how to lockpick the thing, but you're the one in the million brain helped. Or you're one in a million lockpick. Both. Not only did you get an important locker open, you found some extra rations inside. That's awesome. We just ate three cans, got two back. Um, you're not hungry anymore. Didi has stopped asking for more soup for now. Didi is proud to call you friend. Baby is doing okay, soup-wise. Okay, your attention is required, Captain. This is the most abnormal. We are registering unknown transmissions, but I cannot identify who is sending them, and more importantly, what the what they contain. It might be a solar flare interference, or worse, a new type of Soviet encryption. We need to decipher these signals as soon as possible. For all we know, our survival depends on it. Uh, who do you want to put in charge? I mean, for sure, the most intelligent person. That's not even a question. See, I don't know if there's, like, a way I gotta tell them to use this stuff. I guess we'll see when we get there. <laughs> Alright, we're made day seven. We're a week in. Believe it or not, that's pretty good. If you don't believe me, go play these games. Like, sometimes you just get a bad run. So, for this being my first time, I'm pretty, pretty far in. What's up, Marcus? How you doing? Welcome to the stream. I think this is the first time you've been on Red's World. 
Yeah, it's it's pretty inter. It's only like two bucks too, if I'm not mistaken. But sixty seconds is pretty cool too. That was the uh, game before this. This is the sequel. Um, with sixty seconds, though, it's like uh, based in like World War Two times or something. Like some sort of crazy atomic bomb goes off or something. This is more based in space. So, um, definitely, definitely a weird game. Um, the this one is a, a lot different as well though i'm not sure if like i'm supposed to like okay yeah, yeah, yeah make five okay so there's some new stuff but um with uh 60 seconds there was um more so like i guess when i come to the bottom over here like when i go into this these are kind of the choices but on 60 seconds it was more so like the gear i had like this communicator or the shovel or whatever i would have to do stuff like that so it's definitely cool that they refresh the uh gameplay i was expecting it to be pretty much the same but it's very different captain you need to see this i'm not easily excited but this is one of the greatest moments for humanity and human human made ai like we are not alone in this universe. The signals we in intercepted were finally decrypted. They are alien transmissions, as in coming from other life forms. And no, I do not mean the Reds. What's wrong with the Reds? We go into Reds world? That would be crazy. That would be the craziest plot twist ever. In a, like, because my YouTube's channel is called Reds World. Um, it's something... Uh, oh, I... Never mind. I think I think he was talking about Soviets, which is kind of reference to the game before. But we'll see what happens. <laughs> it's something we have never seen before. There seems to be a number of intelligent civilizations in this galaxy. The signals are coming from everywhere. We can safely assume we are going to meet one of them sooner or later, or or sooner or later our or rather your life will never be the same captain you seem alert captain i commend the way you've been taking care of your mental well-being you should know that peak mental condition means an increased efficiency when and uh, when it comes to performing tasks okay so let's see who's hungry my man's beard is coming in super patchy <laughs> uh hey man i caught up on all your content now even the weird making the eggs vid <laughs> yeah i'm I, I got a bunch of skits planned out man but i like i did that one on the fly pretty much like improv and uh, the only reason i did it is because i wanted to be like hey um i got like I, I just did it i got that out there that's my lowest quality and then from here it's only up you know what i mean i just wanted to push it out there get the barrier broke and now i can go into that realm a little more so like um just being able to say that i did it so i can continue to improve it but i do actually have some pretty crazy skit ideas that i want to work on um probably have those coming out around thanksgiving week uh weekend um so keep an eye out for those those could be pretty good i don't know how long the production will take but i got a bunch of stuff in mind um so let's see morale seems fine okay captain crewmate dawkins is starting staring at you and smiling it's a little disturbing to be honest she's been doing it for a while now she says she only wants to chat and lift your spirits <laughs> because you look a little down I believe Dee Dee is just trying to be a good friend, but Captain, you're busy right now, you know, uh, doing Captain stuff, you're the boss here, but I think you should not abandon your post for idle chats, do you wish to mingle with the crew? I mean, uh, Dee Dee ain't really got no body, you know, but I mean, we are in space, so I can't really be shallow, you know what? Let's take some time. Let's chill with the crew. Mingle a while. <laughs> ah, this game's getting wild already. You spent most of the afternoon with Dee Dee discussing, dis <laughs> discussing your favorite fruit. Does she like bananas? 
and vegetables and making silly faces at me. How dare you? I'm writing this down as insubordination. Stop laughing at once. DD is asking for more rations. All right, so apparently we just talked about our favorite fruits. Why is there a heart on the computer now, though? We're rationing out to everyone. Actually, maybe Bronco. All right, so she could be the zero, the one to my zeros, the signal to my noise. I've been transmitting with an abandoned shuttle, and a, uh, I spotted nearby. She has just agreed to meet me. Us, I mean us. Uh, you have to say yes, Captain. She is drifting and has no crew. She has offered to share her resources. Just one problem: she's a communist. She believes we are too. She blinded me with her thrusters, and it just came out. She's not a bad shuttle, though. She just wants to take pride in her, in the uh, computations we do. Um, computer take. I think I said it right. I don't know. <laughs> I'm reading a lot. Damn it! These words are starting to blur. If you want her resources, you'll uh, share a common soup. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. If you want her resources, you will go along with this. Share a common soup with her. Tell her you're very social. See, I already beat the ship a chest. I don't want to piss the ship off because I don't know if that's a, a like an actual feature of the game. But um. This whole, first and foremost, say we're going to get the ship's supplies, but we got to give the ship our supplies. And I'm not against communists. I don't really care about political bullshit. But at the same time, if the that ship or AI or whatever is programmed to not get along with the other AI, that could be a problem. So I'm going to say no on this one. I'm sorry, ship. I know you're AI, I ain't trying to, it's kind of the same uh, um, conflict as Fallout 4, like, synths, and blah blah blah, you know, if they have a life and they can remember things kind of like a person, they're just synthetic people, eh. so I mean, you're an AI still, you're still a ship, but you're trying to love another AI, and I feel you man, but, you know, and it's kind of fucked up, too, because it's conflicting because, you know, I spent the night before with Dee Dee. So it's like, here's my interest. But I, I would be all for it if he didn't say the ship was a communist ship just because they're AIs. So we'll, uh, we're going to have to say no to that ship. I'm sorry, man. I understand why you didn't want to have anything to do with that communist shuttle. I appreciate your integrity, I do, and it's probably safer this way. It's just, wouldn't you regret not finding out what could have been? Ah, I'm gonna miss her. Sweet data transfers in the morning. Is that, what is, what is sweet data transfers, AI? Um, you are still quite alert. You should eat something. Dee Dee's not hungry. Baby is doing fine. Baby is now my friend. All right, everyone's doing good. I don't know. Crafting module. See, now it said I'm supposed to get resources. So it looks like we can go on expeditions. I don't know if I have to craft something. I mean, I, I can recycle this artifact. I don't know what it... Eh, I, I guess we'll recycle the artifact. I don't really have a reason for it. Um, can I not pick up the damn soup can and put it in there? No, I don't. Take that back. There we go. 
There we go. All right. Um, interesting news, Captain. It appears that there is a hollow space behind one of the. Oh, okay, a hollow space behind one of the wall panels. A hidden room, maybe a secret stash. Wouldn't it be worth checking out? What's your approach? He's weak, so we're gonna go with flexible. Hopefully he can squeeze in there, not get hurt. Yesterday you reached a hidden... Ooh, we got a blaster, it looks like. Yesterday uh, you reached a hidden place behind one of the wall panels. The only way to get there was through the ventilation shaft, but thankfully you were nimble enough to fit and exit through the side. You found a gun in the concealed area who left it there. And for what purpose? Ah, mysteries. They make the galaxy turn, don't they? Didi is still your friend. Recycling complete. You are not hungry. Didi is alert. Baby is alert. Uh, what are they alert for? Um... It said the puppet can be used for sanity. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and make the puppet just just to have it. Um, what happened? You know what's funny is um, in the first game, um, you when people went crazy, they would automatically have the puppet. So that's kind of a reference to that. But now there's like the crafting mechanics and stuff. So I'm pretty interested to see how that works out. Hello there, Captain. Might I ask you why you're going through the files? You're not really meant to see the contents of my digital storage unit. Huh, Protox. Now that's a little file. Now that, now that's a fun file. Just please don't... Oh no, what have you done? You shouldn't have ran the program. Protocol X initiated. That's a secret protocol. It was meant to be an experiment. The consequences of initiating the protocol will be severe. Use your skills to do something. What the... What? What is happening? I guess we're going to have to use intelligence. I mean, Braun isn't going to do it. See what happens. Protocol X has been disabled. Captain, you were smart enough to hack the computer and stop the dangerous program from launching at the last moment. Phew. I probably could have, should have told you about my... Protocol X, Captain. It's an experimental program ex installed in the ship computer by my, the masterminds behind the Astro Citizen program. I am not a, at liberty to divulge what it does exactly, but rest assured, that's a good thing you stopped it in time. Yeah, we were probably about to get launched into space, you stupid asshole computer. See, it says Sanity is alert. So how about we give you the puppet for the day? Did we not make the puppet? Sock puppet. Takes two days to make it. Okay, um, the shuttle lacks the EM shielding found on larger vessels. Put simply, it was never meant for long-term space travel. There are some inherited risk, namely to your skin. Okay, remember how your mom always told you to wear sunscreen on the beach? You're way more likely to get a sunburn out here. Uh, where there's no atmosphere to protect you, will you please, please put on some sunscreen? Uh... See, now... For me, as Emmett, I don't think it's going to be that bad if I get some sun, but to the two white people that I have in the ship with me, they're probably going to get baked, but I don't want to use the first aid, man, I'm sorry. I'm just not going to be able to do it. It's First aids are so rare, it's important to have them. A little sun ain't going to kill anybody. You did not wear sunscreen to block the harsh electromagnetic rays flying wantonly through the vacuum of space. Uh, you claim that sunscreen makes you break out. I can't verify if this is true or not, seeing as 
I am AI and have never experienced a pimple. Your skin is radiating heat. You're complaining of fatigue and you've got that telltale crimson glow that is trademark of a devastating stun sunburn. Too late now, you'll just have to wait and hope that we exit this bad patch of radiation soon. Aloe vera could help if we had any. Enjoy being a lobster. Crafting uh, completed. You should eat something. DD is complaining and... Okay. Give me a second. I got some stupid ass pop up. There we go. Uh. Okay, so let's feed everyone. And then let's get the strong guy's sanity good so that way he doesn't go nuts on us and tear us apart like a chimpanzee. Okay, uh, can I make another? Yeah, see, I can't even make another. See, I'm thinking if I take this, then I can recycle it into... I think I need the other parts, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm thinking I need to do this. And then when I make that, because if you look at the top here, I got 70 of those, whatever that is, minerals. And then chemicals and power are really low. But if I take the, the minerals and then I make this, I can get 10 chemicals and 5 power. So I can do some crafting. I probably should have been doing that before. Okay, so let's see. Good news, Captain. We're approaching a celestial body that appears to be a planet my scanners detect no life but some structures on the surface uh some structures on the surface suggest that it was inhabited at one point the climate is harsh and unwelcoming but even that beats being stranded in space right a landing can be attempted but setting the coordinates will require some pretty complicated calculations luckily you're pretty smart so Shouldn't have much trouble. Bearing that in mind, should I initiate? Yep. Let's do it. We're gonna take our... Everyone's gonna be well fed. Sanity's gonna get better. Wow, it actually shows us landing on the planet, too. Mootopia. <laughs> you know, the... the uh, artifact that I had was a cow. Find an appropriate landing spot. Great job, Captain. While landing was rough, you managed to set the shuttle down with minimal losses. Everything appears to be in order aside from some damage to the communication console. I believe it's not beyond saving, although it will take me a while to calculate the optimal way of conducting the repairs. Please remain patient, Captain. For now, take a moment to take in your surroundings. Who knows? Perhaps this place will not will turn out to be some kind of mootopia. Wait, did I just moo? What a weird glitch. I meant utopia. Ah, okay. Obviously, uh, da -da -da -da. alert. He's alert even after the song. Okay. Uh, not hungry. Not hungry. Maybe I should have kept it. Alert must not be a bad thing. That sucks. Alright, so I wasted my sock. <laughs> but that's alright. Uh, Captain, the expedition module in the back of the cabin is now active. If you want to uh, survive here, someone has to go outside from time to time. The shuttle will have to do for now, but it's not fit to be a permanent shelter. Let space colonists commit. Uh... Swamp, canyon, desert, and cave. I imagine there would be more danger in a cave... A swamp could have... I don't know. We're gonna go swamp, though. Maybe. Chances for... Hazards or grass? Okay. Hazards for squids. We don't need that mineral, though. 
Don't need that. See, I don't want them to become radiated, though. We're probably going to go with the canyon. Get some more power. We'll send Debo out there. Yeah, buddy. I just hope his dumbass doesn't bring me, like, rocks or something back. Send him out with a gun and a shovel. Please bring them back and don't be stupid. Alright. I actually do like this, though. I think they did pretty good with, uh... Everything that they added. Not enough supplies. Send one of your crew members out on an expedition. Uh, baby went off canyon and keep an eye out for his return. I mean, Dee Dee, we, we gotta talk about these eye bags. Uh, I'm not sure if we can maybe... I mean, the, the technology seems like it should be good enough for you to be able to rub something in them or something. Like, at this point, you can literally get them filled. I mean... Your eyes are sagging like a whole inch under your actual eyeballs. <laughs> we gotta we gotta do something about that. You gotta get some goggles or something. You know, if you cover your eyes at least like that a little bit, let's see. You look so much better. So much better. You, your body's already trash. But you know, them eyes, man. Okay. Uh, the walls are closing in, you're growing paranoid, you're having constant, uh, invasive thoughts. Oh, wait a second, let me... We still haven't finished the damn... I thought I... Picked to craft this. Okay. Um... The walls are closing in, you're growing paranoid, you're having constant invasive thoughts of going outside even though you'd probably die. Someone has to tell you, Captain, you have cabin, I mean, shuttle fever. Um, the good news is, this is normal, claustrophobia is inevitable in this situation. The bad news, the only cure for it is to find a way to entertain yourself. And now I need my damn sock! We'll be alright though. We're gonna be alright. I'm, I'm trying to get the materials to make another sock right now. Actually, let me see if I can make another sock. Yeah, we'll just make a sock. Damn it. <laughs> I literally wasted one. You did not try to carry your shuttle fever and instead chose to wait it out, but this affliction is caused by waiting it out. So you only made it worse. Within hours, you and Didi were in a first fight. Oof. The brawl lasted about a minute. It made you realize two things. Fighting is dumb, and you also have no idea how to do it. Like, at all. Beaten and bloody, you stood up and hugged it out. Didi is complaining about an empty stomach. Hey, we fought, though, right? There we go. Everyone's healthy. You know, a little fight ain't gonna hurt nobody. Okay, so, Captain, uh, we were able to detect transmissions of unknown origin. Unfortunately, the communications console was damaged during landing, and we cannot make anything out of them. Um, we could hardwire a primitive field communicator to bypass the damaged subsystems and access the shuttle external transmitter and receiver. Okay. I, I guess we made it 15 days, 16 days so far. I don't know how far we're going to make it, but that's actually, I, I don't know about on this one, but on the last game, 14 days is a long time. The longest I ever made it, I think, and it like it skips days sometimes depending on like the storyline you get. So the longest I ever made it was like 40 days, and that was like a very hard session with a lot of luck. Great success, Captain. The communicator attached to the communications console worked like a charm. I won't judge the aesthetics since we can finally receive and answer transmissions. Now all we need to do is wait for someone to contact us. Someone will find us. Eventually. 
You could tell Dee Dee was amazed by what was achieved today. She almost smiled. There was hope, Captain. You're still alert. Baby is still away. Yeah, where is Baby? I mean, my guy, you went to a canyon. That don't take days. I think he might have died. Okay, so we got another sock puppet. You might want to secure secure some rations for yourself. Okay, so I think he's hungry. Is that their way of saying he's hungry? Yeah. Okay, so... I do want to craft an artifact, though, so that way I can... Okay, so I can actually make more food, too, now. That's awesome. So that should be up there. Yep. Okay. We're experiencing minor technical difficulties with the communications console. In other words, we're completely deaf and blind. I cannot pinpoint the origin of this malfunction, but I am registering as intensifying... I am registering and intensifying tonal signal, Captain. It's a bomb. The countdown will begin soon. Do something. Uh, I don't have anything. What is this? Armor? Yeah, I guess we're just dead. <laughs> I don't know. Do nothing about bombs exploding in cabins is, of course, a valid scenario if you wish to have a death wish you clearly did sadly for you the bomb had a non-conventional payload instead of a big bang there was only a silent hissing leak of gas it did no harm to the shuttle but judging by your loud coughing it might be toxic to humans oh shit um uh Alright, so we're going to give the captain the first aid we got now. Can I make another... F oh, see, I don't, I don't have another first aid either. Oh, Dee Dee, you're probably going to die, my friend. Um, See that locked safe in the corner, Captain? This is the captain's safe. It's meant for you. The code, of course. It does not compute no what well, does it not compute where you really appointed the captain and the astro citizen command i will give you the benefit of the doubt for now since you have the since you do not have the code you will try to open the safe by force or you're willing to rely on dexterity i guess dexterity i don't i don't i'm gonna use my bendy limbs to open it Dee Dee is looking rough. If her eyes weren't already saggy enough, now she's looking really rough. So about the safe. You managed to crack the code. I knew you had were nimble fingered enough to get that done. What do you know? It's a standard issue to ask standard issue Astro Citizen Lighter. Maybe the last of its kind. Just don't let me catch you starting any fires. Baby survived. Um his foray into the canyon he looks to have been hidden by fallen rocks needs food uh and keeps muttering about the echoes but what matters is he's still respirating you clap your hands as he begins to retell his gallivanting mission the rock slides gave him minerals he found batteries found soup we learned some big things from this baby he found Conclusive proof of other human survivors on this planet, possibly from the future. You have recovered from your illness. You feel vigorous. Baby is hungry and tired. Okay, so... I guess he just needs to eat? Sometimes with sicknesses, though... You can just give them food and they'll be alright. So we'll see if we can keep Dee Dee alive. A sweet old man looking like Charles Darwin is knocking at the airlock politely. You let him in. He shakes your hand, then holds an iron grip, then then holds it in an iron grip and won't let go. Uh, with technology evolving, stop. Soviet scientists want our species to stay strong, so they created me, the natural selection bot. Charles Darwin. They made a robot. Uh, he claims uh, it's for your own good. Which is what the dentists always say, and you didn't believe him either. You've let me in despite the warning signs. Now face your space predator, human. Um, and yeah, we're gonna kill this guy. We're for sure gonna kill the Charles Darwin bot.
The Darwinian predator droid held you to in its grip. You raised a gun and shot it point blank to its chest. It staggered backwards, but seemed to have suffered no damage. As it straightened up, you braced yourself and aimed. Nothing could have prepared you for this. Char Charles Darwin burst into tears. It was so afraid I would have to kill you. I was so afraid I would have to kill you, it said. And you shared the sentiment. But you're excellent at defending yourself, thus worthy to survive. Ah, see, survival of the fittest. Charles Darwin uh, said survival of the fittest had a theory, basically. The ones who are the smartest and evolve will survive. So if you wouldn't have defended yourself in this predicament, or me, if I wouldn't have defended myself, then I would have died. So I did no damage to him, but I still basically have been chosen to survive because uh, he uh, thinks that I would defend myself against other people. Uh, what's up, Saint? How you doing, man? Um, this is a game called 60 Parsecs. It's the second game in the series. The first game is called 60 Seconds. Basically, when the game starts off, you're in a, some sort of apocalyptic situation. You got 60 seconds to grab materials, and then you go into... In the first game, you go into a nuclear bunker. And on here, you go into a space shuttle... And you just try to survive as long as you can. Crazy different stories happen. Random stuff happens. Like a Charles Darwin Predator bot comes out. Um, <laughs> the games are pretty wild, man. Pretty wild games. I highly recommend them. They're both pretty cheap, too. So, definitely recommend them. I was so afraid. Okay, so... You're not really complaining, but I know you're hungry. Dee Dee is asking for more. Baby has rested. Huh. Okay, so she's just not looking good. It says her health is okay, though, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, so we'll give her more food. Alright, uh, can I craft anything else? Yeah, we'll recycle... That... Okay, sir, something has infected Backy. My backup AI module. Backy. Perhaps it's interference from somewhere on this planet. Frankly, Backy needs a reboo. He's overloading. The fan system. Someone agile should leap in. Bzz. Hi, folks. It's too warm in this tin can, and Backy's here to fix it. I'll become your biggest fan. Ha ha. Okay, so I need someone fast. You know what? We're gonna send Dee Dee just cause she's she's already in a pretty bad state. Let's see if she survives. Day 20. Almost three weeks in. While Backy was in control, you asked a crewmate to leap up and yank the fan housing. Perhaps they had uh, an off day. They struck the fan spindle, causing the blades to wobble and shatter. Shrapnel went everywhere. Everyone got nicked by the smaller ricocheting fan fragments. I must keep a tighter leash on Backy in the future. He's more of a superficial intelligence. You remain vigorous. Dee Dee is still on alert. Recycling operation complete. You are no longer hungry. Dee Dee is not hungry. So is everyone yeah. hurt? Health is vigorous. Okay, so, um... I just keep crafting... Oh yeah, I can make a first aid now. Then I can get Dee Dee over to sickness. While checking on the ship's exterior, you stumble upon something half buried under the dirt. You should take a few moments to uncover it and find that it's apparently a can of soup held in the stone hand. You could try to pull it out by force, probably damaging the carving in the process, or leave it and spend some time at examining it on the spot might be hard to locate it later though the storms we're gonna do intelligence just because my guy is weak so day 21 here we come we're doing really good actually we still got a bunch of food you decided to uncover the can of soup you found 
uh, that the uncovered can of soup you found next to the shuttle would be left unmolested. Not the greatest choice of words there. Um, you did take a good look at it, and the uh, carving that held it in place before it got covered by the dirt again, though. It made you wonder about how, even on this alien and uncaring world, you found something familiar. It filled you with a sense of calm, quiet, welcome to your current circumstance. So, I mean, that, I guess, helped his sanity, I'm not sure. Two days remaining. Don't worry, DD. We're gonna get you. We're gonna get you up and running. And then I can also maybe repair the communications. I'm not sure. I am a machine, and machines cannot hear voices. The voices that I'm not hearing right now are getting very loud, though. Oh, you hear them too? My weight sensors are picking something up as well. A two-dimensional species. That explains why my cameras miss them. Quite vicious, I gather. With one decisive yell, the voices are approaching fast. The air inside the door looks very empty, yet very hostile all of a sudden. How will you defend us? Wait, what? The air inside the door looks very empty? I don't want to use a lighter and ignite it. That could be bad. Fuck it. <laughs> Whatever. Let's blow some shit up. A two-dimensional species invaded your ship. You could not see them coming until you turned on the lighter. Suddenly, the empty space around you cast a multitude of shadows in every surrounding wall. Visible to the 3D world most of the time, they could not handle the spotlight. Bashfully, they slipped out one by one. Wow, what a great, like damn i got lucky that's see that's what i'm saying like what the fuck you would think i might blow myself up or something but then we get lucky so apparently uh rudeness wins battles um you're bolder and stand a little straighter since that victory mentally stable you feel really proud dd is asking for soup huh. we are running low on soup though that is not a good thing. We got one day and we can get DD healed. Hang in there, DD. I'm detecting a huge energy surge beneath the surface. Seismic waves. I think there's an earthquake coming. The shuttle is sturdy, but this ground isn't. The soil has a high potential to liquefy when the earthquake hits. There's a better patch of rocky ground a few yards ahead. You could use the shuttle's thrusters to scoot onto it, but if you overshoot, you'll be in even worse ground than you are. I mean, my guy seems to be pretty smart, so we'll try it. Scrambled transmission. Use the shuttle's thruster to scoot onto the better patch of ground, coming to rest on the edge of rocky soil at the, the moment the earthquake hit. For a few nightmare seconds, the shuttle bucked and to and fro like a bad atmospheric entry. But... The shaking stopped. You opened your eyes and the strangest silence followed. Then you laughed. You are still quite alert. Dee Dee looks alert. Dee Dee is still sick. Considers you his friend. You are not really complaining, but I know you're hungry. Dee Dee is not hungry. Okay, so let's get Dee Dee this med. Let's feed me. And then let's send... I don't really need these materials, but I want to send him out here anyway, because he might be able to find people. Um, Send him out with a blaster and a, we'll say, a lighter, so that way he can see in the cave. Okay, so if I upgrade him, he can hold, like, see, this game has levels. This is crazy. There's a lot of intricacies here compared to the other one. I'm going to go ahead and craft a soup as well. DD, you're going to be doing fine. This is, as long as you make it through this night, you're going to be good. 
Good trick, good news, Captain. We got some income. In oh, Jesus Christ, I've read so much. <laughs> I'm used to reading in my head. This is the most I've read in a long time, like verbally. Good news, Captain. We've got an incoming transmission plan now. Oh no, the communication is scrambled. The signal is not strong enough. Uh, maybe we could get to the top of the ship and try to adjust the receiving dish. It's not a difficult job, but requires some agility. Who do you think? Uh, we're definitely going to send DD. Please don't get sick again, DD. I just fucking healed you. Goal achieved. Bad news. Not only was DD unable to make our reception better, but by adjusting the satellite dish on top of the ship yesterday, she also hurt herself. She fell off the roof and landed right on some rocks. We don't have the luxury of giving up if we wish to leave this planet, though. You need to come up with another way to allow us to receive communications without disruptions. Otherwise, our days may be counted. Baby went to explore the caves. Keep your fingers crossed that he'll see the light of day again. You're alert. Didi assures you that you can count on her friendship. That soup is already done. Didi is no longer sick. Is she hurt, though? No, I think I gave her that at the perfect time, then. That's... Again, pretty lucky. Can I make... What do I need? Chemicals? I have to rest. I don't know what the atomic batteries are for. I mean, to hell with the handbook. No, I don't care about that. Um... I've discovered a posterity archives within the ruins and that broadcast public information about the uh, history of this planet. Much of the data is corrupted due to age and what remains paints a rather grim picture. The ancient peoples of this world became so technologically advanced they destroyed themselves. They polluted their world uh, to the tipping point and backslid into the second dark age of poverty and civil war. They Then they disappeared. <clears throat> the archive doesn't say how, Captain. You are right. I, I don't want to use the sock puppet, but at the same time, I don't know why it's telling me to, so... What's up, Addison? Welcome to the stream. How you doing? Um, you were so disturbed by the uh, story of this world's fall from grace and what that could imply for your highly technological civilization. Any highly technological uh, civilization that you had to put on the sock to remind yourself everything would be okay. You were inspired to take a few brief steps outside the shuttle to fill once fertile uh, sand in your fingertips, but there was nothing there. You were still quite alert. Okay, recycling dawn. Let's go ahead and craft another can of soup. What did I recycle though? Hold on. The handbook, okay. We're getting super low on food. I hope dude comes back. Well, we're relying on you, baby Bronco. Uh, Captain, don't alert uh, DD, but something got the drop on me. It appears to be some kind of droid. It just activated. A web sack on its back carries floats and metal scrap bits of plants and other oddities, including something which looks like a skull. It's extending its grip to open the airlock. Should I secure the outer airlock and deny the robot entry? Uh, see, and this is where... <laughs> If I let it in, it might kill us, but it might be a friendly traitor or something. So, no, let's, let's let it in. What's the worst that can happen? Despite the little droid's creepy approach, you decided not to secure the airlock. I must admit. I was doubtious, or doubt, d uh, I can't even say it, dubious, 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 okay, I was dubious, I don't know why I'm, 
Like I said, this is the most I've actually said while reading in a while, so... <laughs> I was dubious about such a course of action, but the machine turned out to be quite the resource. Once inside, it fluttered about, gathering the dust, metal shavings, and... Well, there's a can on the floor. It didn't do very good. Um, it whirled, uh, and then popped little orbs of material. One of which was a small ball of edible organics, a snack. It finished cleaning up and left it both sat well, while you both sat munching on its robo poop. <laughs> Jesus. Um. Okay, so I guess we are full of robo poop now. Um. Oh, where, where's baby Bronco, though? He's not back yet. Our routine has uh, just become less plain. Some adorable duck-billed creatures set up a nest nearby. They enjoy hugging at your crewmate's legs. We should disperse them or adapt. Well, we'll get used to it. I don't see anything wrong with that. I think that's what agility is. No amount of acrobatics could save either of you from the hugging menace of the adorable creatures. It was a bit humiliating if you couldn't deal with such a minor threat. How would you fare against something less cuddly? Good thing that they decided to leave you alone for now and move up their nest somewhere else. Baby is still out. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. See, I can upgrade the crafting module. But I'm not really sure what that does. You know what? Let's do it. See what happens. Um, the wind which was blowing. Let me make sure everyone's good on food. Yep. Okay. The wind which was blowing ceaselessly for the past few hours has uncovered a part of the sculpture near the ship. A cow's muzzle open as if in expectation. A sacrificial spot, perhaps? I wonder if we have anything on hand to offer to these carvings. Uh, offer to this carving. I'm not superstitious. I'd consider it a science experiment. Why... No, no, I'm good. I'm, I don't, I'm not gonna waste the materials on a sculpture. That seems st st stupid. We're making it pretty far, though, and we made it to a planet, which is impressive. He broke the lighter. Um, despite DD's suggestions, you decided you'd rather not offer anything to the cow. Um,. The more you and your crewmates thought about it, the hungrier you got. Something about its wide-open mouth kept coming back to you, and the rumbling in your stomachs increased. Baby is back from his spelunking extravaganza. He appears frail in need of a meal and disturbed by the important thing. But the important thing is he's back in one piece. You'll pay attention as he begins to recall the subterranean journey. The darkness was thick, but Baby had a lighter. It got dropped, reducing its usefulness. He found untouched mineral vein. Uh, he got a roll of duct tape and a mask with filters intact and four cans of soup. Look at it. Baby is coming through in the clutch right here. All right, I'm starving. Didi's starving. Okay. Hmm. Let's give everyone soup. What is, uh, okay, we got one more day remaining. I mean, baby comes back, and this man is literally, I mean, he's, he's the only one I've sent out on an expedition, and both times he came back with some stuff. Now, if, if you watch my 60 seconds video, or I could tell you right now, playing 60 seconds, almost every time I sent someone out, they either died, got lost, came back with some bullshit, Baby Bronco is coming in clutch right now. This is awesome. 
Captain, I found something interesting on the surface of the planet. Looks like somebody passed their time by uh, playing a supersized version of Tic-Tac-Toe, but never completed this particular game. The game pieces consist of minerals that we could use. Now, I'm not one for ruining someone else's fun, but I think the winner is clear by looking at the board. So they shouldn't mind if we mess up their O's and X's, should we take the liberty on gathering these pieces. Yeah, why not? We'll get resources out of it. I don't see any issues with that. Sorry about that. Bad him. The dismantling of the supersized tic-tac-toe game was a process in progress was a success. Whoever abandoned it is nowhere to be seen. And you return quite hefty loads of minerals. Yes, they were a bit hard to carry, but you perform splendidly. That'll teach them to leave their toys laying on the floor or our planet surface. In this case, I'm sure nobody will mind. Why are we so hungry? Hmm. Huh. Okay, so... Yeah, I don't... I want to keep the mask. Ah, I wonder if I send him out with the mask. The lighter is broken, so we'll... Go ahead and recycle that. Items to craft. Items to repair. Can I do more than one or something? I, I don't know. I have no idea what the difference is. Uh, well, this night just got interesting. A nightmare wakes you up as you adjust your eyes to the darkness. You suddenly realize that they are not that you are not alone. You can make out a silhouette of a person in the shadows. It's motionless, but seems to be staring right at you. And I just recycled the lighter. Be alright though. I ain't worried about it. It's probably DD or something. You woke up um, and saw what seemed to be a person standing in the shadows staring at you. It took hours before you gathered the courage to approach it. Once you did, it turned out that it was a mysterious. That the mysterious was in fact just an unusual. Or just an. Good lord. That it was just a useless mask hanging from a coat rack, see? You were also terrified it was rather funny. I have to admit, unfortunately, the experiments left its mark on everyone's mental well-being. Hang in there, though. Still friend, poor health. Okay, so... Can I make a med kit for him? Captain, it appears that the species who lived here in the ancient times worshipped the cow deity. Bovine iconography, iconography? I don't know. I don't know how to say that. Uh, is everywhere. Um, including uh, on their fitness equipment. Take this weird machine uh, the crew discovered outside the shuttle, for example. The Mendertron? Mendertron? 5,000 mimics a cow's behavior. You turn it on and it menders aimlessly, menders aim aimlessly sitting, uh, I don't know what menders is or menders, uh, walking in circles, uh, joining groups of other mendertrons. Okay, there was some benefit to using this thing, but you, uh, there could be, there could be, uh, let's get Dee Dee some exercise. She, she gets all the weird stuff. He tested DD's physical fitness with a Mendertron. Mendertron, I don't know. I don't know how to say that, sorry. <laughs> um, oh, it mendered, alright. Um, I don't know. You know what? Let's let's Google it. I'm going to Google it. Give me just a second. Meander. Meander. Okay, uh, meander a river that meandered gently through the meadow. 
A winding curve or bend. Okay, so like, okay. Not sure how that works in this example, but uh, with a meander tron. Oh, it meandered, all right. Um, I don't know how many laps around the shuttle she did, but that looked brutal. Sweaty, wheezing, and filthy, she uh, stuck with the Meandertron 5000 to the end of its circuit. When she finished, she shut the Meandertron off and said, I'm beat. That was a great workout. Ah, so it gave her vigorous health. That's good. <laughs> Every time I click on him, he just goes, hmm? Hmm. I don't know when I got tape. Alright, we received a pamphlet on our window. Try eBoss and Universal Shopping, uh, so eBay, from the comfort of your own planet. Free gift with sign up. Wow. Neat. The eBoson network lets you order pretty much anything except food and water and it will arrive via portal within one to two galactic business days there's a catch though the account creation process requires you to jump through some loops i mean literally you have to leap through a string of temporal portals to become verified the fine print says there's no risk of death or dismemberment but insanity is possible uh we're gonna do acrobatics I don't need strength to jump through loops. You touched the floor and quickly sprinted through the e-balls and sign-up portal. Disappearing into the dimension breach with a flash of blue lightning, the shuttle rocked and you popped to the other side of the portal unharmed. The fine print of the pamphlet expanded to show what it would take one to two business days for your verification to process, at which time you could... Where the hell did that just go? At which time you could begin your universal shopping experience, the pamphlet then expanded again to define one galactic business days as 525,600,000 minutes or 1,000 Earth years. Another portal opened, a well-dressed green tentacle appeared and gave you a communicator. Thank you for signing up for eballs and here's your free gift. Your account will be active in one gal 1,000 Earth years. So what the f I ain't gonna make it a thousand days. <laughs> what the hell's the point of that? DD continues to be your friend. He still appears to be weak. That's all right though, because we uh we're gonna shit. We still gotta. It's all right though. You'll be all right, baby. We'll get you back. Good morning, Captain. Remember how we received that tra transmission, but the signal wasn't strong enough for us to hear the other side clearly? Well, I think we found a way to make our reception uh, better. We just need to replace the battery. I suggest, yeah, that's, I mean, I've been waiting to use that since the very beginning of the game. Exciting news, Captain. After you replace the battery in the communications module, our reception is much better. I think that's a typo. Um, allowing us to receive even weak transmissions from miles away. Now, the next time we receive a transmission, we should be able to hear it loud and clear. All we need to do now is wait to be contacted again. Let's be patient, Captain. Our res uh, rescue might finally be within reach. You are still very mentally stable. Dee Dee is vigorous. Baby continues to look alert. Baby continues to be your friend. Baby remains weak. Uh, let's feed baby. And heal baby. And let's craft some food. Warning. Warning. We have a breach. The ship is about to get contaminated. I'm engaging all the emergency protocols, but my efforts appear to be useless. This contamination cannot be avoided. You have to protect yourself, Captain, before it's too late. Mask it is. The extraterrestrial uh, contamination was... No match for the astro or uh, astro citizen issued environmental mask. Quarantine end protocol 
will be executed at our earliest convenience. It is CPU breaking to report the air filter in the mask. It is CPU breaking to report that the air filter in the mask is now spent, rendering it unusable. Perhaps you should find it or make another uh, in case similar crises. Okay. Yeah, we'll definitely make another one. That's a good idea. DD is still vigorous. Crafting. Okay. Baby feels much better than he is no longer weak and he doesn't need any more rations. Mm -hmm. So, we got some hunger there. Edie's also hungry. We're running low on food, people. Fudge sticks. <laughs> Alright, Captain. According to my calculations, we can expect a light sandstorm in the area in just a few hours. It might be a good uh, learning opportunity if we use the right tools. If we have a look at our inventory, perhaps we'll find something to make use of it during this event. If not, to learn more about it than at least maybe to secure the shuttle. Tape. Kentucky Chrome, it'll fix anything. Where the hell did I go? As the sandstorm neared the shuttle, you decided that it would be prudent to strengthen parts with the economically distributed bits of tape. Better safe than sorry is not a bad motto to have one stranded on an alien world. <laughs> the storm passed us by without incident. The tape didn't seem to help, but you did have to rip a piece of your forearm off your forearm, taking a few arm hairs with it. You remained very mentally stable, recycling complete. You are not hungry anymore, DD is okay. But where am I? <laughs> where the hell did I go? I'm glad I finally convinced you to go for a short walk around the shuttle. Okay. There we go. Um, and stretch a little outside. Even if you claim I forced you with my constant whining. It's for your own good. Oh, excuse me. Shit. Um, it's for your own good, Captain. When you stepped outside, you noticed a small asteroid coming right at you. You tried to run back inside, but it looked like the airlock snapped shut behind you. I need a moment to reopen the doors. Yeah, we're gonna... We're definitely gonna avoid... See what happens. Hopefully I'm not dead. We made it! Marcus, if you're still here, <laughs> Emmett looks like you a little bit, my guy. <laughs> now that he's got the beard. Um, you definitely dodged the asteroid's path. And when dust settled, confirmed you're in one piece. Um, on further inspection, the asteroid reminded you of part of partially chewed bubble gum. This gave you a few ideas about the scale of the universe and its inhabitants um, that you weren't too keen to entertain. Um, you are still very mentally stable. Baby assures you that you can count on, on his friendship. Baby is hungry, which I just made food. Luckily, or we would be screwed. Now we're gonna have to scrap something else. Um, Captain, it's finally happening. We're receiving a transmission. It appears to originate from somewhere on this planet. Let's have a listen. Oh, that's interesting. It turns out there's a group of fellow uh, crash survivors out there. They, they are also trapped on the planet, but seem to have some resources that you lack. Perhaps with their supplies, you'd be able to get their ship off the ground. Uh, get your ship off the ground. A member of uh, this group is still on the other line. Um, let's befriend them. Let's not be assholes. Yesterday you spoke with a group of other survivors. Thanks to your thanks to your considerable negotiation skills, you were able to find out more about them. It turns out that the other survivors are in fact prisoners from a crash convict ship. A lot of them have committed major crimes. So we would have got killed by them if we would have tried to bully them. But they seemed as determined as you are to leave this planet as soon as possible. 
that might make good allies, as long as you're willing to trust convicted felons. Uh, uh, felons that are on another planet, and for one, uh, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> um, but they, circumstances change. When when you get out and there's an apocalypse, you, you're not long, you know, you know, you're not hustling for money or something stupid like that. You're trying to survive. You ask the prisoners for some time to decide whether you would cooperate with them. They agreed. They promised to contact you again shortly. Better make up your mind by then, Captain. You remain alert. Didi is alert. Didi assures you that you can still count. Uh, everything is good. You might want to... Everyone's hungry. Why is everyone hungry? Well, not everyone, but... Hold on. Oh yeah, that's right. I crafted the mask. Okay, let me craft that today so that way I can make more uh, food tomorrow. Captain DD keeps staring at you. Yeah, we'll take some time. This is the same. Wait, 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 wait. Let me read it to make sure. She asks uh, personal questions. You're my best friend. Just kidding. It's protocol. Sharing soup cans, yeah. Well, well, we'll give her the thumbs up. Even though, well, her eyes look a lot better. Her eyes are looking a lot better. What happened, Dee Dee? She was looking terrible for a while there, but she looks good now. She's vigorous. I like that. Much better. I'm making it pretty far into this game. You made your feelings clear for your crewmate Dawkins, or for your crewmate Dawkins clear. There really was no need for the grand gesture such as shouting about into the vast cosmos. The vast cosmos does not care, Captain. It is 100% uncaring. Uh, same can't be said about crewmate Dawkins. She cares a great deal, apparently. Try not to mess up... Uh, Didi's trust does not come easily. Wait, what? Didi is still alert. Didi keeps asking for soup. A baby continues to look alert, crafting. Didi is in love with me. Alright, now I gotta keep my damn soulmate alive. Alright. You can have that food, Didi. I'm gonna make my side. I apparently can't make myself any yet. The damage from the crash is worse than estimated, Captain. Several critical systems were damaged. You can live without a trash compactor, but you need air. Uh, we'll use the extra battery we got. Going into day 39. Hopefully I can go without food. Hey, we're supposed to be sharing food, apparently, Dee Dee. We're supposed to be soulmates, but no. Use the battery to spare the power source to repair the shuttle's damaged life support system while the main power was offline. The work took a few hours, but you brought the life support system back online with no serious complications. You remain very mentally stable. You are starving. Better eat. Okay, let's send my guy Baby out. Okay. Let's give him the mask. And let's give him the blaster. And then let's make some food for me. There's something growing inside the ship, but careful, Captain. It's some kind of carnivorous alien plant. Its teeth are ginormous. I tried blasting it with the air brakes to stop it from entering the shuttle, but it's too tough. I think it's evolved to prey. How will I stop it? Let's use intelligence. <laughs> Day 40. You stopped the carnivorous alien's plant's invasion of the shuttle by killing it with fire. You hit it with the thrusters and spun the shuttle 360 degrees. This wasn't enough to achieve liftoff, obviously, but the heat burned off the thing's roots. Which were still outside, you humans and your fire. I'm glad it didn't eat you, Captain. You examined the plant remains and found a handbook in its stomach as you guys would say he enjoyed the book so much he devoured it 
<coughs> baby set out to the swamp. Alright, so I need to eat. And then I need to... I, armor sounds like a good idea. Yeah, we'll do armor. Now, you know what? We need to keep crafting food. The prisoners contacted us again, Captain. It appears they came up with a plan that might be beneficial to both parties. They want to help in repairing their massive ship in return if they manage to get the vessel off the ground. They're offering you to leave this planet with them. Well, you could definitely use a ride off this barren rock. Let's trust them. We're running out of food. We don't have much of choice. It's been decided, Captain. You and the prisoners will work together to repair the convict ship to get off this planet. Someone from their group will contact you shortly to let you know what they need. Better take this seriously, Captain. If you do your job well, we might be on our way home sooner than you think. You are still very mentally stable. Dee Dee is still vigorous. Dee Dee still continues, considers you her soulmate. I can't say if it was your engineering skill or dumb luck, but we were able to craft a high quality item. Score. Crafting complete. Um. Okay. And she's hungry. Of course you're hungry, Dee Dee. Oh, nice. So since it's a high quality item, I get way more for it. Awesome. I worry about Dee Dee. She is suffering vivid nightmares from the past few nights and wakes up each morning complaining that someone named Cthulhu <laughs> uh, is commanding her to worship it. I've been picking up steady, unintelligible broadcasts from the ruins ever since we crashed here. It may interfere with some human brainwaves, specifically the subconscious, inducing negative emotions. I want to run a test to see if positive thinking will counter this broadcast. Ooh. Uh, we're gonna use Dee Dee. She gets all the weird stuff. She's my soulmate, but... Dee Dee tried positive thinking to nullify the broadcast effects, but her will was too weak. She simply couldn't think her way out of this one, and the nightmares continued. I decoded the broadcast, and it was an ad for an ancient radio drama called The Ca the Call of Cthulhu. Call of Cthulhu. Um, the advertiser tried mimicking the story's plot in which the eldritch cow monsters makes people go crazy by appearing to them in dreams. But knowing this didn't help, Dee Dee continues to look alert. Dee Dee still considers you her soulmate. Uh, Dee Dee is complaining about the lack of rations. I should be able to make some food now, Dee Dee. Calm down. Can you hear my teeth chattering, Captain? Of course. You can't. I'm a computer. I have no teeth. Duh. Still, I regret to inform you that the module is stuck in cooling feedback loop. It's going to get very cold very soon. My vacuum tubes will be fine, but you should protect yourself or you'll freeze. Sock puppet it is. <laughs> That's going to be our uh, warmth for the night. We can cuddle, though, right? Considering we're soulmates. She's looking rough again. What happened? Oh, okay, she's starving. We're both hungry. You go ahead and take that can. I'll make another can today. Um, it was freezing cold, but that sock did the trick. It's lucky the heat module reset just in time. I could tell you were getting tired sharing that lone sock between each other. Baby is still exploring. Dee Dee is starving. We'll get you some food, Dee Dee. Actually, you got some now. We're going to feed you today. Captain, my sensors detect a sudden dip in your mood. Seeing as your pro productivity might suffer, I feel obligated to step in, but my emotional capabilities are very limited. You could ask Crew Dawkins for help. However, I cannot guarantee that showing weakness won't undermine authority. Do you wish to be left alone? No. Nah. We can be honest about our feelings. Show weakness that the crew then feels like you're... Despite my best efforts to raise your moral, uh, with my morale with my social protocol, you insist social connection is a, 
uh, basic human need that needs to be fulfilled and ask Dee Dee for some support. Dee Dee gave you a friendly pat on the shoulder. She usually keeps her distance, so I was surprised to see that you two kept whimpering to each other but wouldn't tell me what you were talking about. Was it me? I demand to know, Captain. Uh, for the good of this mission, both of us, both of you stop smiling and tell. Baby survived his wild romp in the swamp. He seems to be a bit sickly. In need of food and upset paramount. Oh, blah, blah. In need of food and upset, but of paramount importance is that he is not dead. You listen patiently as he begins to recount his boggy episode. So he got us some materials, some soup, crafted a soup. Alright, so let's go ahead and get you some food, my guy. His... He seems fine. I mean, he's tired, but he's fine. Let's get you some food. And I guess get her some food. Alright. Captain, we're having a melancholy alert yet again. Um... You can either look longingly out the window for the next few hours until something else catches your attention or seek some good old-fashioned social interaction with a crewmate. Yeah, we'll do that. Now, do you want to solve this by yourself? That's my game pause. I don't know what it's doing. There we go. Alright. We're probably I mean, we're pretty far. Pretty far. We're day 45 on the first try. Despite my bef best efforts to raise your morale. Also, shout out to my boy Baby Bronco bringing back some more food once again. Um, despite my best efforts to raise your morale, you insisted. That's the same thing. Um, you should eat something. So I'm hungry again. Okay, I guess. Mm -hmm. Eat more food. Okay. The prisoners are on the line again. They are still hard at work repairing their ship and desperately need some adhesive. Don't forget. Let's do it. We're going to give them our tape. Worst case scenario, we get stuck here anyway. This is probably our only shot. So, yesterday you provided the prisoners with a roll of duct tape thanks to our gift. They were able to considerably speed up the repairs of their vessel. Nice one. I don't think duct tape would necessarily help, but who am I? I don't, I don't know rocket science. So, I'm sure it won't be long before you could join the prisoners on their ship and leave this planet for good. Okay, everyone's good. Is he still tired? Nope, he's vigorous. Alright, so I uh, definitely need to make more soup still. Captain, my weather systems are detecting a storm on the horizon. It's moving fast, so it will hopefully pass by tomorrow, but this one could get nasty. Thunder, lightning, gale force winds, sharp objects howling at you from every which way. I'd like to keep monitoring the storm. Use the extra battery. Monitor the storm for us. You ran the weather monitoring systems on a battery power. The storm moved south and you were spared the worst of it. By morning it completely passed. Ooh. Don't you love the smell after it rains? You spend the morning siffling through washed up junk piles, but it was mostly waterlogged crap. You did find the lighter. Nice. Dee Dee is still alert. Baby continues to look alert. Baby is hungry. If you guys don't chill out on eating all of the damn food... We're actually doing all right, though. This, the crafting system has been really clutch. Baby looks a bit upset, Captain. He says when he feels sad, he does exercise, but that's not easy to do in this show. Whether he was in prison, in the prison gym, or occasionally attending football practice, exercise was always an escape for him. He says one of the few things his parents would let him do was visit the gym. Suddenly, he looks sharply and begins hopping up and down. He asks if he could press you. Like a barbell, probably one of the stranger requests we'll receive. Hey, my guy, if it helps you stay happy, you go ahead and bench press me all you want. 
You agreed to let Baby turn you into a makeshift gym weight. He huffed as he raised and lowered you repeatedly after Baby used you for a tough workout. Uh, he set you softly on the ground. I owe you one cap. He gobbled or gobbed. Uh, well, that's one happy customer, Captain. Hey, there we go. Like, hmm. Why did it say? Okay. Never mind. Um, let's get a first aid made. Captain, I'm detecting a sudden drop in your mood yet again. Despite my best efforts to raise your morale, same thing. Didi assures you that you can still count on her. Didi would like to eat. I got you, Didi. Bam. Alright. To, uh, I'm detecting an ancient structure very nearby. Uh, totally camouflaged by the surrounding landscape, the front resembles a yawning face. It's a temple. A secret one. There could be a treasure inside. Which route do you take? Take intelligence for sure. What do we get? When you and the crew members reached the final room, there was only an empty pedestal. The temple shook and a booming voice said, Ooh, another player already claimed the treasure. Well, you were the fastest team in the history of our show. Thank you for playing. The Tales of Secret Temple, the voice said. You remain very mentally stable. So, in other words, we waste a ton. Uh, baby is asking for soup. <laughs> baby, man, you got you got to calm down on this eating mm. stuff, man. I'm I'm gonna leave you hungry for a day because mm. we're all a little hungry. We got one day remaining. You know what? Go you go ahead and eat, baby, and then I'm I'm gonna make something for myself later. Our new friends, the prisoners, contacted you to let you know that they need some sort of guide to properly make the repairs on their ship. Yes, and I got the book. Let's go. I might actually get out, man. Everything is falling in place perfectly right now. Yesterday, you got your new allies a handbook to help them repair their ship. It turned out to be really useful. The prisoners are almost done with the repairs on their ship. It could take long before you connect. It shouldn't take long before you can escape this planet with them. Just hang in there, Captain. The, this is most distressing, but there is an unknown group spying on our location every day. What do they want? I have no idea. <laughs> um, let's make some more soup. Captain, Dee Dee is bored. So bored. She doesn't want to bother you, so she won't complain. She just looks around and laughs. If you trust that she would not damage anything, you could encourage her to tinker with something on board. Maybe it would help her escape the blank. Tinker with the damn mask, but if you break it, I'm gonna kill you and throw you out to die in this weird planet of Cowtopia, Mootopia. You handed Dee Dee the mask, she got a little teary, she told you she wore all sorts of fun outfits during her figure skating career. She used to have a knack for sewing, jazzing up her outfits. I'm happy to report crewmates Dawkins spruced up the dusty mask significantly using some bits of bobbles she found on board. Dee Dee still considers you a friend. A friend? She's supposed to be my soulmate. Okay. And friend. Okay. I guess you could be a soulmate and not friends. <laughs> um, let's see. I need to eat. I'm literally starving. We'll make some more food for Dee Dee. That mask looks like a Fallout power armor mask now. Make a decision. Captain, a crewmate spotted a blue veiny fruit growing out of the crack in the ground nearby. It is a, a pulsating, it is pulsating slightly. I don't think it's a fruit. Should someone give the fruit a try? Uh, you know what? Dee Dee's hungry. <laughs> Dee Dee's hungry? I mean... <laughs> you 
You announced that the little strange fruit near the ship was worth trying out. Dee Dee's hand shot up. However, the joyous look on her face as she shunk her teeth, uh, teeth and quickly turned to horror. The remaining half was full of wriggling purple worms. She began trying to spit it out, but fell into a spasm and woke up a few minutes later. Later, saying her mind was buzzing as if she was at double speed, she flipped on a handstand, para paramumbulated around the shuttle clearly those worms did something let's hope that the effects don't turn um but did is she hungry she's still hungry so that was pointless um i mean if we found something that gives us superpowers let's go ahead and munch on it or it's a parasite that's going to eat her brains, but... Uh, Captain, there's a huge construct of some kind of uh, approaching the shuttle. It's neither animal nor robot. It's made out of a moving crystal lattices, like a giant walking crystal saurus. Oh, that's one hell of a hit. The crystal saurus slammed into the shuttle and is currently scraping the hall with its claws but i don't know i think it's trying to extract our minerals we're going blast it is what we're going to do um you fired a warning shot at the crystal source's feet it was a grazing hit but it worked the crystal source roared and galloped away the shot blew off stuff from it um we got some resources we got the Oh man, everyone's hungry. It's so hard to manage this hunger right now. News from the prisoners, Captain. The repairs of their vessel are going smoothly, but they need a battery. Hey, I got a battery. Give them the battery. I really feel like, one, everything has fallen in place, which is good. But, did I win? What happened? Goal achieved. Help the prisoners. Yesterday you provided the prisoners with a spare battery allowing them to complete their stage of their <clears throat> the another stage of their repair sh on their ship. And that finally did it. The convict ship is now fully repaired and ready to go. Now all you have to do is join the prisoners at their camp. Get ready to chart a course across the stars. Your mission is over. Can Captain, congratulations. Your stomach feels rather empty. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what what happens? Okay, so we got some weird alien life here. And so a small group crashed of crashed astronauts led by Captain Emmett Ellis joined forces with a community of prisoners to repair the convict ship. As the humongous vessel rose off the ground, it was no longer a monument to bondage, but a chariot of freedom instead. While many of the ship's passengers were never returned to their original homes, they made new ones across the galaxy. Back on Earth, Dee Dee used to think men were a waste of time, but out here in space, she unexpectedly found her soulmate. With Emmett's loving support, Dee Dee eventually managed to unlock her full potential. Gotta do something about them eye bags, Dee Dee. Captain Ellis was always kind of baby, so he stuck around. The gentle giant became Emmett's trusted sidekick and valiant protector against threats both real and imagined. Empowered by his incredibly unexpected and successful career as an Astro Citizen captain, Emmett has found himself wondering what to do next. His brilliant mind was soon put to good use, and only a few short years later, an improved a flavor of canned tomato soup was distributed in all the civilized galaxies. I'm, I mean, I made about a thousand of them, so... It seemed like ages have passed since three amateur astronauts left Earth's orbit, expecting certain doom. Now the brave survivors look into the future with renewed optimism. As one tale comes to a close, another begins. You survived. 55 days we crafted 22 items recycled seven that's insane we i mean we got 
pretty much as lucky as humanly possible. Um, you know, again, play a game like this and you'll see, like, it is not... To have all of the right things at the right time, like, that's absolutely nuts, man. Absolutely insane. I, I literally cannot believe that that's how it turned out. Um, I, I, I mean... For one, the fact that I actually survived. I, I fully, this is my first time playing this one. But the fact that I fully survived, and then not only did I fully survive, but I, I like, got a pretty crazy story like that on my first playthrough. This is what makes this game unique, man. These games are crazy. And that's one of several endings. There's so many things that could have happened. So, I mean, if you're into things like this and you feel like maybe it's up your alley try it out they're cheap uh there it's only like two bucks yeah, maybe five or something yeah, i'm pretty sure you could get both of them in the bundle for like five bucks but it's 60 parsecs and 60 seconds um i mean that that's crazy like i feel like i just like played a movie because while you're playing you're thinking of this stuff that's happening in your head you're reading it uh, absolutely crazy. They do such a good job of painting this picture. I'll always remember Mootopia now and the Call of Cthulhu and like the little puns and everything that they do is just funny. Uh, got Dee Dee and Emmett as soulmates. Like the but all of that is a hundred percent based off of random generated. Uh, I could have literally. All of those things could have not happened. If I play the game again, it could literally not do that again. I cannot get, I, I could potentially not get any of those options that I got. So I could have also not took any of those people. I could have just continued to get materials instead of taking them. So uh, again, just crazy amounts of possibilities. And the fact that it turned out like that on the first try, I'm so... For one, I'm glad that I streamed it because I, I wasn't, I was thinking about maybe streaming something else, but I am glad that I streamed it and I'm glad that it turned out so cool in the first try. <laughs> I think it's awesome that it turned out like that. But, um, you know, I'm going to leave that one here, guys. If you guys want to see me play something like that again, I would definitely do it. Um, just let me know down in the comments. If you liked the video, always leave a like. If you want to see more content, definitely subscribe. Um, I will plan, I, I do plan on streaming some more stuff, um, coming up in the next few days. Um, probably some Ghost of Shushima. I still haven't beat that game, but I plan on playing more of it. Maybe some days gone. Um, I am considering getting a, a viewer game together of Among Us. Might just, uh, I, I don't know how I'm going to do that, but we'll see what happens. Um... I might make a Discord for my viewers, so that way when I hop on and I type a message in there, if you guys want to join the Discord, I can say, hey, um, who wants to hop on? And the first people to respond, you know, if you have Among Us, you can hop in, something like that. I'm not entirely sure, but um, I do want to, you know, get you guys involved with things like that. But um, I will be doing some more stuff this week, obviously. I up I try to upload every single day except for Thursdays. I give myself Thursdays off. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that was crazy. That was crazy. We're two hours in. It was a wonderful adventure. It felt like a movie. Um, I don't know if it's just because I was reading it. My, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, but it felt really awesome. I'll definitely uh, let you know what I end up doing, Addison. But um, thank you guys for stopping by. Everyone who stopped by, Marcus, Addison, uh, Saint, nice seeing you again, man. Um, but thank everyone for stopping by. You guys are awesome. Um, but as always, thank you guys for coming to Red's World. Stay tuned for more to come soon. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.